Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be talking about the simple plane stop. There are thousands and thousands of different designs to this. And it's one of those things that the more you get into woodworking, the more you realize this is actually one of the most useful things in the shop. Throughout the ages, as long as there has been a plane, there's been a plane stop. You need something to stop the board from sliding while you push it forward. That could be as simple as just clamping the board down so it doesn't slide around. And then you plane one end, turn the board around and plane the other end. It's not elegant because you can't do the whole thing at once, but it works. Loosen the clamp, turn it around, plane the other end. It works. One step up from that is you take a different board that is thinner than the board you want to plane and you go ahead and clamp that down in place. That board then takes all of the force, so now I can plane the whole length of the board without running into my clamp. Next, if I'm fine, I'm doing a lot of planing, I'm gonna put a hole in my bench that I can put something into. This something can then be a stop, really quick and easy, because I can take that in and out, and I can plane on that stop. From this point on, things really start to get wild because rather than just having one point stopping, you can have multiple points. Because if I'm pushing against one point and I need something that's wider, I could be playing out here, but that's gonna make the whole board turn out of the way. So if I put another point out here to constrain this movement, well then I can really start to do it. Or what if I put a clamp on this end to push it against this and I use an end vise to clamp the whole thing together. Being able to fully lock the board in place makes it nice. This board is not going anywhere in any direction. Now I can plane this whole surface without any problems with anything moving. The downside is now I have to loosen it to take it out and measure it and check the dimensions. If I'm just using one stop, then at any point I can just pick it up and flip it and put it back down. It's very, very fast to have one, but you get a lot more strength to have two. You find a lot of people when they first get into woodworking like to have that constraint of both clamping down onto a stop because it just makes it easier to use. You don't have to have quite as much skill to keep it in balance. Then as things get different, you find two different camps. There are the people who like to have just that single stop to clamp to push something against because it's fast, it's easy. And once you have that skill of being able to push against it without the board sliding around, having just a simple stop is incredibly useful for milling down lumber. Then there's the other camp of, well, one stop is always cheaper than two stops. So if you're going for something that's more cost effective, just having a simple plane stop works really well. Plane stops really need to do two different things. Number one, they need to be able to be above the height of the bench, but not moving. A stop. And number two, they need to be below the height of the bench so that I can actually use this surface of the bench at some point. Because if you have a permanent stop in the bench, well, you might as well have the bench up against a wall. It's always going to be in your way. There's always something you're running into. Stops themselves come in all different shapes and sizes. This one I just made recently from Reed Designs. I really, really like this one. It's really simple. It's really easy. And it doesn't allow dust to get in here so dust can't clog it up. So this one works pretty well. Um, although I would prefer to put a thumb screw on there, kind of like these ones that Veritas does. These ones, I can actually turn this up and these teeth come up to engage. I can turn it down and they go out. Now the problem is they have that serrated edge, so dust is always getting in there. Then I've got this one over here. Then I've got this one over here, which is a very traditional design. And this one, I actually tap it up to height, but it can't, again, all this dust can get underneath. It's a really nice, simple design, very, very old. Comes in all different methods, but this one works really well as well. I also have this one too, which I really like. It goes into a corresponding set of dog holes and will lock all the way across the bench. So now, I can plane wide boards that go all the way across. And I'm thinking about remaking this one with a second screw farther out so that I can adjust both of them up and have a longer piece that goes all the way across. But something like this that just goes into the dog holes, I can plane up against that. It makes a great planing stop. Very efficient and very fast. I like it. And all of these are just the absolute bare minimum of plane stops. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of designs that have come out over the centuries and millennia. As long as we have had planes, we've had plane stops. And unfortunately, as soon as you start talking about different traditions and different styles and different methods, you're gonna get arguments. People say, no, this is the best, and no, this is the best, and no, this is the best. And there is no best. I have all of these be here because I like different things for different uses. Also, I like to be able to show off different methods. There is no best way. There's just 
the way that works well for you. I love this one from Reed because no dust can get underneath it. I love this one because it goes all the way across the bench. It's a really thin line. It goes in and out really easily. I can store it underneath the bench. It's very fast and efficient. I love this one because it's historical. It's got a lot of character to it. It just looks good. It, it feels fun to use. And it's just really, really cool. And then I really like these gizmotic things because they, uh, they're just fun. They're spring-loaded. They're just well thought through. Very, very simple device. Very effective. Every one of these has a pro and con that makes it work really, really well. But then this brings us back to the full circle of the difference between working in a vise and working with an open planing stop that allows you to pick up the board and check it. Two different styles of doing it. Two different ways of doing it. Two different traditions. There are lots of traditions over this simple plane stop. It requires you to have a little bit more skill, a little bit more practice. And that is kind of what makes hand tools fun is because it's down to your skill, not as much the quality of the tool. And plane stops really feed into that. But there's something nice about being able to constrain a board, lock it in place so you're not worrying about it moving around. You can just go to town on it. And there's lots of other ways to do it. I mean, I haven't even talked about doze foots and hold fasts and other methods of clamping things down or the crochet hook and the list goes on and on and on. This is one of those topics that's really kind of fun. And you're gonna hear a lot of people out there who tell you this is the best way to do it. And this is the historical way to do it. They're wrong. There is no historical way to do it. There is no best way to do it. There might be a way that is really common in a particular tradition, but that doesn't make it better than any other. It's really coming down to, what do you want to try? What makes it fun for you? What fits into your shop, your characteristics, your tools? And the only way to do that is to experiment to it. The nice thing about this is most of these plane stop methods are really, really cheap. These ones from Veritas are like, uh, you know, 15 bucks or so. The kit from Reed is $8 or so. Uh, this antique one actually comes from Black Bear Forge. Uh, you can remake it out of scrap metal you have around the shop. This one was made from a couple scrap dowels and a piece of thin wood. There are so many different ways to do it that fit into different budgets. So here is a collection of images that Jeff uh, from Reed Tools found when he was doing some research on his. This one's, this one's kind of fun. It's a simple doze foot, or some people would call it a bird's mouth. It allows you to trap the board so you can have it up on edge and you can actually joint the board with a plane stop. Just clamp it on the end or put it in a couple dog holes to go in. Then we can get into this one. This is a uh, modern one from Veritas, very similar to the, the thin line wood. It goes into a dog hole here and here and allows you to plane thin stock with that. Uh, this is a remade one. Uh, it's actually a scrap that was, looks like it was cut out of a hinge. You put a couple screws into the end of a block and it basically ends up being like this one. The block goes down through the bench. This is a, a modern one um, that you can get that, that fits in there. Um, you can see it here without all the extras. You just need screws to lock it into that block and then that block is tight enough. You can pound the block up and down and it moves in the bench. Then this is the, the modern one that from uh, Lee Valley. And this one has a lot of concepts we'll see um, from other videos. This one has a lot of concepts that have been drawn from other places. But this thumb screw allows this to go up and down. And a spring actually pulls it up and down. The only problem is it starts to fill up with dust. And that's actually a, a common problem with most of them. This is an older one, and we'll see it several like this. This actual screw comes through here and moves this lever up and down. This lever then locks onto the shaft and stops the shaft so it's at the correct height. You can see a different design. Screw comes in and this lever then locks down on the shaft. Um, this one is, um, yeah, this is basically the same thing you see from the top. So the screw here is what will uh, set that lever. So you can loosen it, slide this up to the right height, and then lock it back down with the screw. This one is one from Miller Falls that actually goes all the way through the bench and has a screw on the end that you can adjust it up and down um, so that there's no adjustment on the top and you don't need a screwdriver for it. Here's a different uh, design from Miller Falls, basically the same thing, but it's got multiple attachment points so you can try different things. with a little catch that allows you to do the edge of a board or different types of teeth depending upon what you like. Also, there's a big opening so it allows the dust to clear out a little bit easier on one like that. This one's kind of fun. It's got the two different ends on here, and you can actually lift it up, rotate it, and bring the other end into play. Um, and this is one where Reed actually pulled quite a few of the ideas out of. You can see how the screw comes through, and you run a screw on the top. There's a pin that holds it in place, that the screw stays in place, and can run this whole thing up and down. Very similar design. This one's a lot like the others. Um, the screw right here runs the lever that locks the shaft in place. And this one, this one's kind of fun. It has a, um, a attachment point that comes out the side of the bench so you can put a key in and then lock this down at different heights. So you can pull it up to the height you want and then lock it down with the key from the side or this one with a lever that can swing down and lock the whole thing in place. So lots of different designs out there and there are just so many different ways of doing this that it's, it's kind of one of those fun things to do some more research on.
So with all that being said, uh, the plain stop is one of those fun things that when you find one that works well for you and you get the skill of using it, it is really a fun topic to play with. So have a little bit of it fun. So try something different. Have something that's a little bit fun. If you're used to working in a vise, yeah, try out a planing stop. You might find that, wow, it makes it really easy just to put the board on there. I can check it, run a square down it, put it back down, go into it, and I don't have to mess with the vise. It's right there. It also will occasionally help your hand plane skills because you have to push smoother and cleaner down the board to keep it in place. So you tend to get a really nice clean surface because you're using a better skill to do it. So give it a try. You might find you like something or you might find that, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What planing stop or vice do you use? Is there something that you find to be really cool that I didn't mention here? I'd love to hear that. Throw those down in the comments below. That does help the, the channel, as well as hitting the like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for that. That helps us get in front of more people and helps this channel to grow. Also, if you wanna take it one step farther, we do have patrons over here on Patreon. They are the ones who really keep the lights on and keep this channel going. We are funded by you, the viewer. I don't take sponsorships in this channel, so thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or becoming a member here on YouTube, Patreon has links down below. Click the little join button to become a member here, and thank you for keeping us going. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. This is a very simple planning stop. Or I guess you could say that this is a plain, plain stop. Or as my wife would say, please just plain stop. <laughs>